chapter 11. My dad, my mom's dad is named Papa Pete, and he is not only the nicest grandpa in the world, he is one of the smartest too. Papa Pete always tells me that a no is just an opportunity for a yes. So when my dad said no, that he had absolutely zero interest in going to a rock concert in Philadelphia or anywhere else in the world, I took it as an opportunity to turn that little tiny no into a big fat yes. But dad, I said, running after him as he stomped off into the kitchen, you've got to be open-minded to the possibilities of new adventures. Isn't that what you're always telling me when I don't want to eat one of mom's new food experiments? Hank, there's a big difference between you taking a bite of your mother's meatless papaya trail mix burgers with crushed cashews and me standing in a stadium full of lighter waving, leather pants wearing fans shaking their rumps to music without melody that gives me a headache. Dad, can you honestly look me square in the eyes and tell me you you want to miss out on all that fun? Yes, he said, looking me square in the eyes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Aren't you perceptive? Sometimes, Dad, you shock me because knowing you as I do... Hank, my dad interrupted, I am not going to a rock concert in Philadelphia. End of discussion. He left the room and went into the kitchen. I could hear him opening the refrigerator to get out the cranberry juice and club soda. He mixes them together to make a half and half, a drink that to me tastes really sour, but he says it's ah so refreshing. I turned around to see Frankie and Ashley creeping into the living room. They had obviously been standing by the door listening. Okay, so that didn't work out so well, Ashley said. No problem, I answered. We'll just move on to plan B. You're a man of action, Zip, Frankie said. That's what I like. Now, what is plan B? I have no idea, I shrugged. I was hoping one of you had one. There's got to be something that's going to make him want to go to Philadelphia, Ashley said. We just have to figure out what that is. My dad says people travel to see something they love, Frankie said, like when we went to Zimbabwe to see the village where my ancestors came from. And my dad went to Moscow to look at videos of small bowel functions. Ashley said, that's your digestive system inside your stomach, uh, around your stomach. By the way, you should know that Ashley's dad is a doctor and not some kind of night, nutcase who loves to watch movies of people's guts in action. What are the things your dad loves? Frankie said as to me as he plopped down into my dad's easy chair. Besides crossword puzzles, which we all know he loves more than cranberry juice itself. He loves my mom, I answered. I sat down on the couch next to Cheerio, who was asleep on his favorite pillow. Without even waking up, he cuddled up next to me and put his head on my lap and shook his leg like he was chasing something in his dream. No, dude, that doesn't help us get him to Philadelphia because your mom is here, Frankie said. We could kidnap her and leave her a note saying that he'll find her in Philadelphia, I suggested. That's extreme, Zip. Frankie said, use your brain. What else does he love? I don't know, I said. Well, if you don't know, who does know? You're his son. I'm just stupid, I snapped. Maybe I deserve to stay back in fourth grade. I scratched Cheerio behind his ears. Dogs are lucky, I thought. The only thing they have to learn in school is how not to pee on the carpet. I could learn that. It's the long division that I don't get. Guys, we don't have time for you to argue, Ashley said. We have to keep our attention on the goal, which is to get your mom and dad to Philadelphia. And by the way, you're not stupid, Hank. Bingo, said Frankie. Bingo, I like the sound of that. Bingo what? Bingo, as in let's come up with an idea, Frankie said. All three of us stared at one another, trying to come up with an answer to the question, 
what would it take to change my dad's mind? It was so quiet. I could hear car horns honking on the street 10 floors below. I heard the elevator doors opening in the hall outside our door. Footsteps, then the soft slap of the doors closing. It was probably our neighbor, Mrs. Fink, leaving for the uh, painting class she takes over at the Senior Center at Amsterdam Avenue. Every painting she does is a picture of food. Her last painting was called Kebab, a study of meat on a stick. It showed these really juicy chunks of meat on a skewer looking all spicy and delicious, just like they are in real life when Amir grills them in, on his cart on the corner of 74th Street in Columbus. What's going on, Hank? Ashley asked. You look like you have a good idea. I was wondering if Amir is making kebabs right now. I could sure go for one, I answered. Frankie shot me a look that I knew really well because I had been getting it from him my whole life. Get with the program, Zip, he said. We're thinking Philadelphia now, not roasted lamb. Maybe he was thinking Philadelphia, but I was way, way, way down the roasted lamb road. Welcome to the inside of my brain. It goes where it wants, whenever it wants. There was no chance of pulling it back now. I have a suggestion, I said. Why don't we move on to plan C? And we did. In fact, we moved all the way to plan M. We sat on the couch and thought. We flopped down on the living room carpet and thought. We stood in the hall and thought. We went into my bedroom and listened to the radio and thought. Every plan we came up with had something wrong with it. We just couldn't come up with a perfect magnet that would attract my dad to Philadelphia. There it was, Philadelphia, the city where Benjamin Franklin flew his kite, where the founding fathers wrote the Constitution, where the Phillies and the Eagles play, and most importantly, where my parent-teacher conference was not. Only two little tiny measly hours from New York, so near and yet so far away. What kind of plans would you suggest for Hank? Maybe you have ideas, B, C, D, E, whatever. <laughs>